The Prime Minister has rejected criticism over his relationship with former Qantas boss Alan Joyce. It was revealed Anthony Albanese was given at least 22 free flight upgrades worth tens of thousands of dollars. Mr Albanese maintains he did nothing wrong as he insists they were declared. From time to time, members of parliament uh, receive upgrades. What's important is that they are declared. All of mine have been declared. Mr Albanese confirmed 10 flights were paid for by the Australian Labor Party. Nationals MP Barnaby Joyce has told Sky News he's not impressed by the Prime Minister accepting an upgrade multiple times. I think the issue is it's, it's not one or two, it's something like 22. So it's, it, he seems to have made it sort of a ritual of his job. It seems to be uh, very much a repeat performance. And um, I suppose it's... Yeah, look. It's really, he's really making it difficult for the Labor Party, isn't he? That's the biggest thing I can say. It's almost like he doesn't want them to win the election. Joining me live is Assistant Immigration Minister Matt Thistlethwaite. Matt, thanks for your time this morning. I'm guessing your constituents could only dream of being upgraded on an international flight to business or first class. Was it appropriate for Anthony Albanese as Transport Minister in and out of government to solicit international flight upgrades from the Qantas CEO for himself and his family for private travel? Good morning, Kenny. Uh, as the Prime Minister said, the important thing is that uh, all of the upgrades were disclosed uh, in accordance with the relevant regulations um, and they're all on the public record. Um, that anyone could look up the members' interests um, that are on the parliamentary website um, and see that. Every MP that receives a flight upgrade uh, or a gift above a certain value uh, must disclose that on the register of members' interests. And the Prime Minister's complied with that, um, as have uh, other MPs that have received upgrades. Do you think it would pass the pub test, though, in Kingsford Smith? I think the important thing, Kenny, is to realise that the Prime Minister's been in Parliament for close to 30 years. Um, and a lot of that time, he's been the Labor Party spokesperson on transport and infrastructure. So. He's developed a close working relationship with not only Qantas, but with Virgin and other competitors. Um, the important thing is that the Labor Party is committed to increasing competition in our aviation sector with the release of the recent white paper. We're going to appoint an ombudsman. Um, we're looking at what we can do to provide recompense for customers uh, where there's flight delays and cancellations. Yeah, OK. Um, the slot but, management scheme, changes at Sydney Airport, all this is aimed I want to ask, Matt, is, more con is, competition. It, is it appropriate for the PM personally to seek additional Chairman's Club membership for his son from the CEO when his current partner was already a plus one? Was his son his plus two? And does that pass the pub test? Well, I think he's the Prime Minister. It's it's it, What we need to realise is this is an invitation that's put out by uh, Qantas uh, and indeed Virgin and other airlines. Um, they invite MPs and other Australians to be members of um, their associations um, and their lounges, um, and it's up to the MP whether or not they accept those invitations. Um, well, so he did, they're, they're invitations that come from the airlines. Are you confident these free upgrades and Anthony Albanese's cosy relationship with the former Qantas boss was not the reason Qantas competitor Qatar was denied dozens of flights into the East Coast last year? Yeah, we've always acted in what's in Australia's national interest um, in the aviation sector. And I think you, you could see in the reforms that we've introduced recently um, around the aviation white paper, um, in terms of Sydney Airport, um, we've, we've introduced some changes around slot management to increase competition. Um, Western Sydney Airport opens in a couple of years. That will provide further opportunities for competition. Uh, all of this has been aimed at ensuring that customers get a better deal. And that's the focus of the government, ensuring that customers get a better deal in aviation. OK. Labor lost the Queensland election. Uh, is there any lessons there for Anthony Albanese and federal Labor? That Should you be worried that Labor is a bit on the nose in Queensland with voters six months out from a federal election? I think the major factor in Queensland was time. Uh, Labor had been in for three successive terms. Um, these things tend to go in cycles and the Queensland voters decided it was time for a change. Uh, there's no doubt lessons in every election um, and we'll, 
look at the results, not only in individual seats, but across the board there. I think the cost of living paid a huge issue, and that's why the federal government uh, has been introducing all of the changes that we've made to assist Australians with cost of living, like tax cuts, energy rebates, cheaper medicines, making childcare more affordable. The coalitions voted against all of those measures, and they don't have an alternate plan. And I think that that's going to be their problem leading up to the federal election. Labor's got a clear plan to help Australians with cost of living. I'm not aware of any policies from the coalition that are aimed at assisting Australians with the cost of living pressure they're feeling. Why do you think the Greens didn't do too well? And, and what is the implications federally, do you think, next year? I think the Greens are increasingly being seen as extremists. Um, some of the views that they've, they've taken um, on housing policy, on the war in Gaza, I think by mainstream Australians are starting to be seen as extremists. Um, and that's a challenge that they're going to have. Um, what implications it will have for the federal election, I'm not sure. I think most Australians tend to distinguish between state and federal elections uh, and policies, but there's no doubt implications around cost of living and I don't see any real solutions from the Greens that are reasonable that Australians would vote for around housing policy or cost of living. Matt Thistlethwaite, thanks for your time this morning. Appreciate it.